Welcome to the Dream On Podcast. I am Travis Gentry, here with Julia Gentry, and we are so excited for you to join us today to talk about this amazing topic. But first, we're going to start out with a question. My turn. My turn. I've been thinking about this one. Go. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what food would it be? <laughs> <laughs> one food or one like, like pizza, burgers? Yeah, like that. One food mm -hmm. for the rest of my life. The rest of your life. Um, like type of food, it would be Mexican. Okay. And so I would probably say if I had to eat Mexican food every day, I'd eat Chipotle. Every day. Well, I only had one choice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I would eat is Chipotle. Okay, good. <laughs> what is one food? I just want to ask another one. What is one food that like your least favorite food? Type of food? Thing that you eat? All of us. All of <laughs> All kinds? I don't know. I haven't tried it. Actually, you were saying that the other day, and I haven't tried an olive in a long time, but even the smell of olives, it Green, just triggers, yeah, yeah, it's it just, triggers you. Just You're ready to fight. Gross. <laughs> Nasty. As Roxy like puts them on all of her fingers. Um, I, don't, I feel like more and more I'm open to the idea of trying foods. Like with sushi, I was like, oh, I don't like sushi. I don't like sushi. And then I tried sushi, and I was like, I kind of like sushi. I'm proud of you. We actually did sushi right the other night. I was really proud of you. That was really good. It was like. Raw upon raw, and you were getting down. That's so well, it was like, look how sriracha you and he can't taste it. He <laughs> yeah. doesn't know what he's eating. It's so hot, he but it tastes good. He doesn't know what he's eating. <laughs> Solid. Okay, great. No, it is another good day to have a good conversation with the gentries. And today we are going to talk about really ultimately any anything. I don't know what I said. Let me. <laughs> Let me anything. back that train Let's talk up. about anything today. We're going to talk about all the things yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> everything. We're talking about everything. We're going to talk specifically to people who want to start their own business or you find yourself building your business and going, this sucks. Tell me what I'm missing. You know, because everybody says being an entrepreneur is like American dream and do your thing. And you're like, but this, in my experience, this just really sucks. And so today we are going to talk about how to start your own business and the things that we would do differently as we have failed our way to success. And we continually fail our way to the next level. Next level. We like to call it failing our way to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that. I, but here's the word, right? I think, yeah. I think that it's the interpretation of the word matters. So even that word, fail your way to success, fail your way to the next level. What does that word mean to you? Fail. Mm -hmm. uh, feedback. Oh, interesting. What does it mean to you? Well, what's funny is that I talk to every human that I talk to. Every human? Every. Oh, my. All goodness. of them. Fear, <laughs> failure. Fear, failure. Fear, failure. Oh, like, that is the number one answer that people would say why they don't chase their dreams, start a business, like, is the constant chatter of the fear of failure. So the fact that you, like, so quickly said that that definition to you is feedback is not 99.9% .9 of the population's definition. Yeah. I mean, I think that, and it has in the past where it can cripple you like your actions mm -hmm. and it just paralyzes you to do anything Yeah, because your mind and the enemy just like attacks you on all the things that could happen. But then when you really step outside of it and you look at it from a non-bias and sometimes I'll even like look at it from like if I was talking to someone else mm -hmm. and they were telling me mm -hmm. and I can look at it from a non-objective biased way, yeah. what would I tell them? Yeah. And so then I'm taking my own you, like, feedback. You talk to yourself in third person. Yeah. Like, like I'll go to the mirror sometimes <laughs> and Travis will come to me with a question. Hey, Travis. And so we have this dialogue. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Imagine walking into that bathroom and you're like, you good? You okay there? <laughs> no, but I think it's it's all about there again. Re and we've talked about it. And we yeah. always talk about it is like reframing it. Mm -hmm. So how do I reframe that? Of like, well, I'm afraid of this. And then there again, we go through a process of like unpacking that. What does that mean? Yeah. What could happen? You know? And so you, you, you walk down the road and you're like, okay, the worst... Am I okay with the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. And if I'm not, then okay, don't do not do it. Don't make that decision. If you are, just know, like have some defense and, you know, in place and knowing that the worst could happen. Yeah. 
Well, and so I would, I think that this is that failure is feedback is truly one of those things I wish I had understood at a heart level when we started, because what I think about the word failure now and what it meant to me in 2008, when we started our first business are very, two very different things. And I think I would have fallen in the category of the 99.9% that was ultimately afraid of failure. That was probably the story of my journey, the first four or five years. And so I think that it's good just to set a tone. So for anyone who doesn't know our journey, Travis and I started, well, you had a couple other side hustles, if you will, prior to this, but together our journey in entrepreneurship started in 2008. We started in real estate. And since then, in no particular order, we've done roofing, we've done internships, we've done short sales, flipped land, fix and flips, Mm -hmm. business coaching, growth coaching. We've written books. We've done stocks. I'm saying we collectively. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we started a homeschool business <laughs> with little children. A nonprofit. A nonprofit. Anything else? I feel like there was something else in there. It'll come to us. But there you have it. So we have had our shares of, of opportunity to practice this. And this is ultimately not to showcase our successes. And it's funny because I was on a podcast the other day. And right out of the gate, he is sharing how much money he's made, all of his successes, right? I mean, unsolicited. I just had said, like, tell me more about you before we jumped on. And it was like, but and they were good. They were good wins. I mean, there were some heavy home runs. And in my head, I was like, I don't, I don't care. And you'd said this a while ago. So it's just stuck with me. Like, I don't really actually care about your successes. Like, tell me about what your failures have looked like and what you've done after that. Granted, those weren't some of the questions I had asked. Him. <laughs> yeah. But it, I was finding it fascinating to where I was like, I don't, I de- like just doesn't, I don't care. And so again, on this podcast, this is not us telling you like, yeah, the successes and it's easy and all things. We just really wanted to share what we've learned along the way and how the failures along the way have shaped how we've moved to the next level. And then ultimately all of those lessons, what we wish we had known back then. So should you be starting a business or somewhere in between wishing that you had a different way of doing it? We just wanted to kind of, share our journey, share our process and our learnings. Yeah. You learn way more through your failures than you do your successes. Yeah. Cause we going back to kind of the beginning for us. Yes. I had like a little side hustle. It was just, you know, and, uh, let me Painting get in Christmas lights. <laughs> I did Christmas lights and I did uh, construction like decks and landscaping stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how I got started. Um, and, and kind of realizing like, wow, I can make way more money if i do this like on my own like i can have a side hustle and this was you know early you know two two thousand two ish and so that kind of planted the seed um but it didn't manifest itself until years later where we actually then started a business but here i also want to preface how i think about this and through the experiences that i have we've had is that there's a big difference. Like when someone says, I have a business, nine times out of 10 or 9.9 times out of 10, they don't have a business. They have, they're self-employed and they have a job yeah. for they're themselves. Creative. Yeah. The difference between having a business is that you can walk away and it's self-sufficient on its own for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. And you have a certain amount of employees or systems. They don't even necessarily have to be like W2 employees but it can function on its own or it generates cash flow by itself without you having to do anything. Yeah. So. That's, that's a business. Yeah. And so we've learned that and we've had businesses where we've had employees um, and, and then we've had businesses, um, jobs, self-employed that we don't. Yeah. And so there's pros and cons to both. Yeah. So what are you starting out right now? Now hindsight, and again, you're on a new journey of still learning the ins and outs of this new venture. But what, looking back, what do you wish you like knew? And I mean, not like intellectually knew, but like at a deep level, what do you wish you had known then that you know now? I think what I really have learned is that you're going to learn two different ways and you can learn through your time or you can learn through paying someone Mm -hmm. through their experiences and you can expedite your process by learning from someone else that is where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And so going into real estate, we we did well based off of we um, mentored under someone and then became partners with them 
but they, they were further ahead than us. What I wish we would have done is really pressed into identifying and finding the right mentors to help us not only um, grow that business, but to sustain it. And then when the market changed is to adjust into the next season of real estate yeah. and how to capitalize on that yeah. as opposed to like stopping for a short period of time. Yeah. And then also, I think I, I have a scripture that helped that I found for myself in this process is um, Romans 12 two. do not be conformed to this world, but be tr transformed by the renewal of your mind um, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Mm -hmm. What I've learned through my looking back is that I conformed to certain things that were happening and I let outside voices and or the like the enemy um, distract me and get me off track. So then I shifted or pivoted when I shouldn't have, mm -hmm. as opposed to staying the course. And that that's came from now looking back another mentor. Yeah. And he said, get in line, stay in line. Mm -hmm. And I wish I would have stayed in that line and just had the right people with the right mindset around us to help us navigate that mm -hmm. as opposed to letting maybe fear or doubt um, get in the way. Do you have that now? I think it's always there, but it's way smaller than, and I'm aware of it. Meaning like, do you have those mentors now that are doing that for you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you feel like, so now that piece, when you look back and you go, man, I wish I'd have the right voices and the right minds speaking into our lives to really help us capitalize on the, the change and the adaptation and getting like, do you feel like you have that now? I think for what I'm doing, yes, I have the right people around me to help me to see what I can't see and understand, um, uh, like potential pitfalls or, you know, there again, all the things that they've learned. Some of the people that I have in and around my life have been doing what I'm doing for 30 years. Yeah. Which I think is ultimately, I think it's the number one, one of the biggest issues I think for the ego, but also when you become a business owner is that you start to think that you should know it all. Mm -hmm. And I think that I wish that I had known it's not always what you know, it's who you know, and that it's not even just the power of relationship, but it's the power of strategic relationship and the multiplication of that relationship like that, that I wish I had known. Yeah. You know, it only because for two reasons, number one is I think that I definitely looking back felt like I needed to know the answer, which is, and then even on the podcast that we did last week around learning and how that felt very, so if I didn't know it, it meant that I did something wrong. And so I didn't, I wasn't the first to seek out help because it meant, well, I'm wrong. Right. But then for me now, the biggest thing that I'm learning is that I am a visionary and hiring Cammie almost you know, a year and a half ago now as my integrator, which I would have never called her that. I didn't see it like that, but she's the integrator to my visionary. And I, gosh dang it, I wish I had known this when we started. I had no, I was a learned implementer. So I was a learned, do it and I'm going to get it done and checklists. I mean, that's how I built our first business is that I was the one like running it out and getting it done. And I did really good. I mean, that's why I think we grew so much is that I had no problem getting it done. But the thing that I've seen in these last two years is I saw myself as someone who had big dreams that either made people uncomfortable or, and so I either like was too big or I played too small, right? Like it was, and then I didn't, I found myself not being able to finish and I'd have these big ideas and they would be like bubbling over. And then I would, my execution of completing them was like falling off the table, right? Or I would talk about these big ideas, but then my steps to creating like sustainable processes just fall by the wayside. So I was never thinking sustainability, always scalability, but never sustainability because that's not how the visionary thinks where an integrator is wired for sustainability. They're wired for processes. And I just, I felt like I was hiding my gift for so long. And that now being able to see my gift as the visionary alongside an integrator who then is alongside these implementers has blown my mind. Yeah. I mean, it's just like created mm -hmm. so much energy within me. And I just wish I had fully known that 
That's interesting that you say that because I think that we've talked about it before with our first business. I felt like me, you, and the other partner had a really good synergy. You totally. And and knowing that that worked because of that, we complemented each other. So it's interesting that you say that it that it took that that long to say no. I'm tired of doing it the way I've been doing it, and I need that person to come alongside me yeah. to help me. Well, and I think it, I. I think that's how I, I mean, that's who you know me as. That's how I knew myself as. I just didn't realize that it was a byproduct of stress. It wasn't a byproduct of actualized potential. It was just a byproduct of like, I'm stressed. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do the things that need to get done. And so it worked in that season very well. And then I think in that time when we started traveling the country in an RV and I just felt like I was kind of breaking, that's the only word I have. There was that shift, but I didn't have words to put to it. And then I didn't actually, I mean, I got the concepts of being a visionary, but I didn't understand uh, how the the role, how important a role of an integrator within a business is because I've even hired implementers who look at me with blank stares. Like if you don't have an integrator, the implementer just looks at you like, I don't know how I'm supposed to get that done. And yeah. I was so frustrated because I'm like, I'm clear on what I'm doing. Visionaries are not clear, but like we talk a lot, but we're not actually strategically clear. And so I was, I've even tried hiring all these implementers, but I was so frustrated because there was, I needed to still do it. And I needed to talk about the details and I hated talking about the details and fine, I'll just do it. And so that's like just blowing my mind for yeah. the last two years. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen that. And I think for sure, I mean, and it comes back to uh, the other podcast that we did as far as like the learning aspect, mm -hmm. like you always got to be a learner mm -hmm. and, and there are actually books out there as, that specifically talk about those two people Yeah, and how like you really, if you want to grow something and scale something, you have to have those two people. Yeah. Um, and that with, book, by the way, is I would recommend rocket fuel. That yeah. That one, pulled all of the one without the other is, yeah. you know, like you can only get so far. Yeah. You're going to go, but you're only going to get so far. So yeah, that's, that, I, I've seen you, I've seen you do that. And, and that's what you've got to decipher on this journey as far as being a, you know, entrepreneur and, and just dis deciding like, are, are you wanting to create a business and grow and be a leader and have a team? Then who do you need around you? Mm -hmm. um, or are you okay with learning whatever skill that you're going after to be in business but knowing that it's, it's you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just, I think the other thing as I was considering, I'm like, man, what would I have told myself back then is, you know, Julia, make sure you've got margin. And, and what I mean by margin is just room for error. So to that point of, you know, you kind of fail your way to the next level. Well, every failure suggests the feeling of four steps forward, two steps back, five steps forward, one step. It also in, in, you don't recognize how much you have to invest in yourself and in the next project. And so that means sometimes more money is going out than is coming in, or it's a lot of time in, but you don't always see the results. And so sometimes I feel like I run my life with like zero margin, like maxing out all things. And, and I just, now that I'm starting to see like margin and we need room for air, especially as we're growing our team, it's not even just, okay, if I make a mistake, but there's nine of us now. So in one day there could be, a lot of potential mistakes, even with processes and systems. And so I think that creating a culture of, and you said this the other day, I love like high standards with grace and margin to go, okay, let's learn the lesson once fine. Just don't do it again. But even in learning those lessons once, like I have to have some margin, grace, uh, some financial resources, um, emotional intelligence, <laughs> you know, like I have to be, have a little bit of time in between meetings to get back to you or to respond or to have like the capacity to say, sure, yes, I can help you. And, and I still have to practice this one. Yeah. Cause I kind of like max it up, <laughs> run hard. Be so like, I think the, and, yes. And so, yeah, like piggybacking on that, as far as like, it's not just about the business. I think it's, it's self development, self improvement. So you've got that piece that you continually got to work on as a business owner or self-employed. And then the business that you're in, like learning and being the best at whatever that is. So the skill that you need for that business mm -hmm. or that industry. And then you've got the other components on the, the other side of it that no matter if you're self, like it's just you or not, that you got to make sure that you have 
the infrastructure in place, mm -hmm. you know, bookkeeping and accounting and, um, and, and then you've got the marketing aspect. So you've got all these like different buckets that majority of people are kind of in all those buckets mm -hmm. like or you start and you're like oh crap i need more buckets that i didn't know i needed and that can feel so overwhelming but it's i think the the foundation is like consistently learning mm -hmm. like you've got to learn and evolve of, of okay like once you get more information like okay i gotta learn this or I got to hire, i got to learn how to hire that person yeah. and then you move a little bit forward and you're like okay i gotta learn this or I can learn how to hire that person. Yeah. Because you gotta you gotta know just enough in every mm -hmm. field to be able to then know. Mm -hmm. Like you've had a few different people work for you, but you've now are at that point where with Cammy specifically, you knew like she was you needed her, yeah. like you wanted her based off of the conversations and going back and forth. Yeah. And what I love looking back about Cammy is that she was relentless yeah. as far as like she pursued you of like, I want to work with you. Like I want to work alongside because I love what you're doing. I love the message. I love what you stand for. And so it was like that, that to me was like, that, that was huge. Now looking back, because you didn't have to throw out there and be like, Hey, here's what I do. And I'm looking to hire someone. No, like she pursued you mm -hmm. and she just happened to have that skill set that we were talking and praying about yeah. of like, you need this person to go to the next level. Well, and I think that that is the other thing that I would say to anybody who's either at a stalemate in their business or thinking about starting a business is that when you know why you're doing it and that becomes like, that's the energy of why you're doing it is like more than just making money or more that's because you've always done it or whatever. It's just, well, it's just the thing that I do. People want to be a part of that. They want to be a part of momentum. They want to be a part of change. They want to be a part of that. And so I think what's been really cool is that when I started building this, it's like, I've never been psyched about business. Like I love watching, like you're really good at like learning business and like your, your ability to understand business is way better than mine. Cause I'm more of a, of a crafts person. Like I love my craft and so for me, like I didn't start the business because I was in love with all the pieces of the business. I started the business because I love what I knew that this could do. And it's been so cool. Like when you stay true to that, Pete, that's what's contagious. And that's what, that's what attracts people. And then ultimately is going to retain people is that energy. And I feel like if we're not careful, we don't start businesses from that place and we don't keep running our business from that place. Mm -hmm. You know, like even on every team meeting, we always start with testimonies of like what happened this last week, like personally or professionally within this work and within this message. And it's like, it brings us to tears every single time because it's, it's who we are. It's what we do. And, and so I think that that's, I think that's huge. Yeah. It's so funny as we talk about this, because it's like, you're, you're, growing your and, and really coming into a business you're creating infrastructure and systems and you've got the marketing side you've got you know cami working on all the back end stuff you've got um you know creating digital products and, and really stepping into where it is a business and what i do and thus far is like it, it really is i'm self-employed yeah like i if i don't if i don't do what i do nothing happens so you'll be very proud of me yeah. Because I know you've been talking about this for a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been maybe eight years. <laughs> We're not talking about eight or nine months, people. I didn't even just say that. I said eight <laughs> Sometimes or nine it takes years. A while. And um you you know, you've always spoken to what I'm doing as a brand and and I I sat down with Cammy the other day and this is truly in the last year and a half we I mean we now I've it was just me and now we have a team of nine and it, it's incredible it's like it really is so cool and she said to me I just said Cammy I still wonder if I'm doing enough for us right like and I know that I'm called to be writing again and to be creating kind of the next thing and she looks right at me and she goes not only is it your job to be writing and sitting at the feet of God she said I also want to tell you operationally you could disappear for 30 days and we got this and I was like I like got tears in my eyes because I was like this is exactly what Travis has been talking about. I mean, it's, it's the one-on-one -on -one of building a business. So I'm not saying that you're the first that's come up with this. You're just the first that's like championed me and seeing this. And it was, I think that is that pinnacle moment that doesn't happen overnight. I think it's why a lot of people quit is because it did not happen overnight. It took, it's taken a decade to get here. But when she said that, like, no, that is your job is to sit at the feet of God and to ask him what he wants to say. She's like, Julie, that's what you did in your first book. That's what you continue to do. And 
30 days, you could just be, we got this. She's like, please come back after 30 days. And, you know, like, kind of those things. I was like, that's all we got. You don't got any more rope. I was like, that's really cool to hear. Yeah. And that to see that my team actually isn't like, well, while you're away, like they want, they yeah, love if you day. don't do and create the content because you are becoming the brand, yeah. then there is nothing to promote and yeah. sell yeah. and offer. Yeah. So I think, again, just knowing that like the energy and the why behind it is, it's just really important. I think for a sustainable business that you, if you really want to grow this thing and you want this to be bigger than you, that, that, that needs to be contagious enough, one, to get you through the hard days and two, to be able to attract and retain customers, staff, mm -hmm. right? All, I think that's important. Well, I think that, and that goes into one of the other things that I've learned is like the, the branding, like, and, and not necessarily like your logo and all that, but like, what, what do you stand for? Yeah. What do you stand against? And, and how do people like connect with you? Yeah. Like what, who are you and being authentic to you because you're going to attract the right people at the right time. Yeah. And so looking back, it's like, you have to, you know, they say riches are in the niches Yeah. and it's like being niched of like who you are and your message and how you're delivering it. Some of the things that you say are similar to what other people have said. Yep but it's delivered in a totally different way. Yeah. And so I think as whether you're whatever kind of industry you're in to like be successful is to, to be like authentic and to be like you, you check this out. Got an Exodus four, two. This is what God says to Moses. The Lord answered. This is when, when the Lord is calling Moses to do something and Moses, like any of us say, no, I don't want to do that. Or do you know who I am? Right. Or a lot of times I think even in, as we consider starting a business is that, you know, even if you had said, Julie, you need to be speaking or writing a book, I would have been like, well, why? Like, that's easy for me to do. Why would I? Well, cause sometimes it's so close that you don't realize that it's God gave it to you. But the Lord says to Moses, what, what's that in your hand? A walking stick. Moses replied, throw it down. The Lord commanded. So Moses threw the stick on the ground and then immediately turned into a snake and Moses jumped back. The reason that I say this is that it's like he was showing Moses in that moment that you, what's in your hand is a walking stick. I gave that. That's what's in your hand. It's your talent. It's the thing that I get, gave you. He's acknowledging that what I have called you to do to lead my people, he needed a walking stick. <laughs> That's all you needed. The willingness to go and the walking stick. I've equipped you with that. But then he tells him to throw it on the ground. And the reason I think he does that is because watch, if I just throw my gift and my talent on the ground, now what is it? A snake. Right. It's almost like I could take the gift and I could use it and I could lead my people exactly where God's asked me to go. Or if I don't use it, it's like, well, throw, throw it on the ground. I think it was showing God, like, how are you going to use what I put in your hand? Because if you're not, it becomes a snake. Mm -hmm. Right. And that to me is one of those things I think is also really important is that part of your career, whether you decide to start a business or not, is our expression of who God's created you to be. Like, what did I put in your hand? Use it fully like use your career as a way to develop that and to and to express heaven in a different way because mm -hmm. if you're not going to use it you're going to lose it you're going to lose it <laughs> you're going to lose it it's going to be snake yeah so i think that's an, another important piece too um I was just trying to so so one of the things like going back to like that i find important for myself that I can kind of, because I love new, mm. and we've talked about this before, because I'm a four on the Enneagram. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, look it up. He doesn't either. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> is that I, I like new, you know, that's why I've done so many different things in real estate, which has been a pro and a con because I get distracted and I do something else. I, you know, and, and I, all the real estate stuff that I've, I've done for the most part, I've had successes in, but I haven't stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And so a, another going back to kind of the get in line, stay in line. Um, but it's like, have a, you know, and, and we heard it from, a, a, I forget his name, but basically, um, uh, what does he say? He says, ha, da, plan a dive and dive a plan. Is that what he said? Yeah. Plan your dive and dive yeah. your plan, which is a, a military. Yeah, he's an ex Navy SEAL guy. And I was like, that is so true because with, especially with what I do, like I have to have the plan. And I have to execute the plan and then I have to evaluate my plan and what worked and what didn't work about it. And that's how I'm going to be great at what I'm doing currently. How do I though? So talk to me about that juxtaposition because as 
an adventure. Like, you know, you speak to this, even to like God's created you to be wild at heart, all men, right? All of us at some level, yes. but right. That wild at heart and keeping you adventure facing, keeping your soul alive. And then knowing that, right. I think that's probably an area that if I'm the weakest as your wife, it's been that you're like, I want to do something. Great. Go do that. Like, great. Go do that. Like, great. I, I would think that I would lean towards a lack of discipline if I'm not careful yeah. because I just so desire your wild at heart expressive to be seen. And so how are you pairing that? I mean, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, tactically, how are you learning to use those? Well, I think it's compartmentalizing it different. Like, so that's what I do. Like my, my business, we'll call it, which is, a, it's, it's, I hate, for some reason, I hate calling it a business because it's not a business. Yeah. Um, it's an investment. It, it is. It is. Aren't but you it's an investor. Like when I am, but it's not a business where it's like, like you said, yeah. I can walk away for 30 days. Sure. If I don't show up, if I don't do certain things, yeah. and yes, I can do day trades, I can do swing trades that, you know, I don't have to sit on the computer and, sure. and look at those. But it's, it's a, it's a, I'm self employed. Yep. Yeah. And I absolutely love it. And I'm going through this process because at some point I would like to offer the knowledge, like going back to what you said, the knowledge and the, the wisdom that I've acquired to me, if I don't share that with other people, it's a disservice to what God has allowed me to do. Mm -hmm. And so I do want to do that, but I'm not quite ready yet. Oh. And so I compartmentalize what I do and I have to stay focused because knowing that's my weakness, that's where the enemy gets me. Sometimes he distracts me. So I need to stay focused in my business and understand like my failures are, are, are feedback. I'm learning. I need to document it. I need to plan my dive and, and dive my plan mm -hmm. every day. And then on a weekly basis and a monthly basis, and I'm going to compound that. So outside of it, I have to have that new adventure, spontaneous, like, not within what I do work-wise. Fair. That's all. That's that's how I do it. Okay. So next time you have that look of despair on your face, not because he's a four, but if he was, <laughs> and he looks like the world is going to drive him crazy because it's Groundhog's Day and he's doing the same different day, that face, you know, that face. Yeah. Okay. What do I tell you? Plan, dive your plan, plan your dive, but like go outside. Well, I think I'm so, I'm so aware of it now. Yeah. Like where I I know, okay, I'm going to do this for a certain amount of time. And as I get better and, you know, I wouldn't say master it because you're, you're always learning something new and evolving and changing is, and that real quick, as we're talking about this, as we're talking about mentors, what I've appreciated is having a mentor that's been doing it for 30 years. Mm -hmm. But now I have a, a new kind of a mentor because actually the other mentor is retiring. And this, this individual has been doing it for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. What I love about it is that he brings a totally different perspective yeah. on the same thing. So I have a great foundation for someone that's been doing it for so long, but I have the ingenuity of so someone good. that's newer and that is utilizing the tools in a totally different way. Okay. So you've said this before, and this has really stuck with me, is that sometimes not downplaying someone that's got 30 years experience, right, is... Because appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate you. We're not downplaying that, but you say, no, okay, you've got 30 years of the same experience, which is very different, yeah. right? Then to your point, someone who's, yep, there is wisdom in the, the length, the, this life span that you've been at this, but there's something about the freshness of perspective, right? Even 10 years is still a decent time to be in the industry. Yeah. But I love that you're saying the spin of ingenuity and innovation and, how young this person is. Like, I think that that's powerful. It, it's, I mean, it, it is powerful. <laughs> like yeah. how he talks, what he says, how he thinks about it. And there again, he's, both of them are very successful, like in their own way. And there's, and that's the great thing, whether whatever most businesses, like you can be successful. There's obviously a certain amount of ways that you can do something. And so, but you can also change it like Tom shoes. You know, I remember, you know, the story with Tom's shoes and how he was bringing his idea and wanted to give one shoe for every shoe that he sold and how he was going to be able to manufacture them at a certain cost. And people, you know, shoe manufacturers or individuals didn't like his idea or, oh, you can't, you, you can't do you, it that you, way. You can't build the shoe that way. And then he did and it blew up mm -hmm. because he was innovative in something that has been around for a long time forever. Totally. And so I think there again, it's 
coming for me now looking at that, that's how I approach everything. And that's even with Malachi and the Rubik's Cube, I told him, watch a few different people yeah. because they're going to give you different perspectives. Mm -hmm. You are going to get the same result. You're going to solve the Rubik's Cube, mm -hmm. but you're going to get there differently. So good. Which, okay, so let's talk about this. So uh, another thing that you've said, I would say the last couple of years that I wish I'd understood at a much deeper level, which is believe it for the best and prepare for the worst. And I think why that is so good because it keeps you shooting for anything is possible. And like, no, we're going to sell everything to everyone, right? We're going to innovate this industry, like to actually believe for the best, but also to be wise and to prepare for it taking longer or it not working right away. Or right. Sometimes it just takes failures to realize that I don't want to be doing this anymore. I think that that is such an incredible principle to live by, but also, you know, when you look at Romans eight twenty eight, is, is that even in this journey as entrepreneurs, we have to recognize it says that all, all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. But check this out. Um, in Genesis, I've been reading, reading through this book and it's talking about um, Joseph and how Joseph ultimately becomes um, Pharaoh's right hand man in Egypt. And it talks about all of his struggle, you know, like his brothers sell him into slavery and then he's in, in the prison. And, and ultimately from the time that Joseph has his dream to the time that he becomes the right hand man to Pharaoh, it's 22 years. So here he has this dream and then it's 22 years to see this thing fulfilled. And by the way, those 22 years sucked. It wasn't like, oh, you're in training. It was the pit, literally the pit and in jail. But then here's what it says is that it then took another nine years before Joseph uh, united with his brothers. And it's ultimately the Bible saying, because God is working the anger out of his heart still. And God is working on his character. So when he gets to the point to ultimately be the man who is stewarding all of Egypt, that he has that character. But then it says this, I thought it in the footnotes, it says that what we learn is that even those who hurt us, may those be the ones that move us towards the throne of God. If you see yourself in the hands of a loving God, not of others, you will not be offended. If Joseph's brothers had not sold him into slavery, how would his dreams have ever been fulfilled? Some of your dreams will never come true until you can handle both mistreatment and betrayal with forgiving love. And I, I thought about that in my journey around sometimes that betrayal or frustration or um, obstacles or all the things is that sometimes I think that we don't, we forget that we're in the hands of a loving God who's leading us towards the bigger picture. If we will be faithful to stay the course mm -hmm. and that it's like, he really is working all things together. And so even if I could go back and go, well, I would have changed that. And I would have changed that at some point. You're like, I mean, not really, because that led to this, which led to this, which led to this. And like, yeah. so there's so many pieces now in our journey that I can look back at those pivotal moments and a, I'm so glad we didn't quit. And even though it was hard and I wish I could have shortened it, you're like, but not really because of what I learned along the way yeah. to be able to now like, hold what he's giving us yeah what would you change though what's one thing that you would change and i, I have something for you i want to see if it's the same thing that you, you... have something for me what's on the other like what what's one thing i would you... have started earlier i would have started all of this earlier i would have believed i would have believed that it was in me i would have i would have not doubted myself i would have not doubted the process i would have not doubted the word like i just said no to god and my, myself for so long i was I would have just started it sooner. Yeah, that's what that's what I was gonna say. Good and, answer. And, yeah. <laughs> and hiring. I'm like sweating. Just so believing fun. and hiring and surrounding yourself with the team to support you but to again, so allow you so, to be able to do. But what's so fascinating is yes, but at some level, and Cammy and I say this all the time. Like if we had met each other ten years prior, oh my gosh, like. No, but I'm I'm saying like if you just looked at it, you're like, man, yeah, if just, I could have totally. like, like four it, years yes. four years ago, I'd be four years further. Than I, you know. I mean, just I'm not saying so obviously Tony wasn't in the. I mean, I mean from like a mental emotional capacity too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I'm so saying if you were too. mentally emotionally all the things now. Yes, I would have started. Rewind you. I would have stopped kicking the can. I would have stopped making excuses. I would have believed sooner. I would have not doubted the prophecy. I would have not doubted the dream. I would have taken that piece of advice. Go for it. Like believe it, believe it, and go for it. Prepare for the worst. It might take longer. By the way, it does. <laughs> but like run after it, like you believed. Yeah. 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 The thing I have learned 
or would have. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, so buckle up. <laughs> Travis always ends with a home run. No, no, this is, I mean, obviously within the investing in the real estate and is um, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. And it's like, we, we got into real estate at probably the optimal time in history to be able to acquire properties at a deep discount and hold those and cash flow off of them. And I knew it at a head level, but it didn't connect with my heart as far as like there again, having the right mentors to help me to see what I couldn't see, but then also to say like, I'm going to, I'm going to gain cash flow, which is true freedom mm -hmm. because then I can pursue and do any and everything I want to do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I would have done differently. Mm -hmm. um, now though, with the knowledge that I have, I can get there quicker um, than if I didn't have all that experience. Mm -hmm. And Which, so, but that's so there again, looking back, you're like, man, if I would have done that, but then who would I be now? Agreed. And so now that I am where I am, hindsight's 2020, but there again, I can make and pivot and make that adjustment now. Mm -hmm. And I should, as opposed to it taking potentially 10 years to get to that place, it could take four years or three years. So really because I have all of that not but here's what this comes back to is even to your point of like it would have been in theory obedience because your very first point was i wish um you can learn one of two ways is basically through your own time or someone else's experiences yes and like trusting trusting someone else's experience without your own is really challenging to do yes. right so even to your point of like we knew at a head level all the things in real estate that we were supposed to be doing now we know at a heart level because we've gone through it and we <laughs> yeah. do you know what i'm saying and so like yeah. Or to your point, like now I'm seeing the blessing of my obedience and what I felt like God told me with this business. And so now I'm reaping the blessing, but it was in that place of obedience that we don't, you don't know why, you know, it's like we say to our kids all the time, obedience equals blessing. But by the way, when you're obeying, it doesn't always make sense. Right. And so I think that that's the whole piece of like, how do you take it from head to heart is oh, it's obedience until you get on the other side and go, oh, dang, I'm so glad that I trusted you enough to to learn by your lessons, not mine. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's, that's yeah. hard to do. And we've talked about it before. It's all, it's about who you become in the process. It's not about the end destination. And sometimes when you're going through the process, you're like, I just want the destination. <laughs> but when you get there or get to a certain point, you look back and you're like, man, no. you know, that those, those were all like, the blessings yeah. in the midst of the journey of hard. It's like the Macklemore song when it's like, these are the good old days. Like you're yeah. in the good old days. And it continually is. I mean, you look back in, in one year or five years or 10 years, and it's always, you look back and you're like, man, those were the good old days. Yeah. So it's enjoying and embracing the hard or the process. Mm -hmm. um, and there again, now compounding on the foundation that we have yeah. and that you have as with your experiences, and and then who has what you want so to good. go further faster so good so may we be voices in your journey that encourage you to start encourage you to not stop and to fail your way to a new level of growth fail your way fail write that down fail my way to a new level of growth and until next time dream on <laughs>